Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel and that is Walter walking away. Hello, we are in outside of Chicago at the Polar National Monument. Don't really know what this is, so we're here to find out what it actually is. And also to get a stamp and sticker in our book. Okay, we just took our little mini tour of the Pullman National Park. I don't know what it is. National Monument. Anyway, it does have some connection to the Pullman Railroad cars. And he built this little square, a little town here that was under his perception of what an ideal little town is. And instead of letting the employees move in and buy it, he rented it out. To his managers and employees who could afford it. Right. And so he built a non denominational church so that all Christian religions could share it. He had company stores, he had uh, you know, little shops in an arcade, which is the correct name for the mall, strip the mall, strip mall for, of the day. Uh, beautiful little row houses that had plumbing and air and good ventilation and, and all the amenities that are still here. They were Toilets. good quality homes. Uh, it was his ideal town. Uh, it worked until there was a recession and they cut wages but didn't cut rents. And eventually uh, they were ordered by the Illinois Supreme Court to break up the connection and they sold all of the houses, uh, mostly to the workers. Uh, but it was a fantastic, fantastic place to visit and a good story. Yeah. The reason for all the sirens is we're right outside of Chicago. Yeah. So it's kind of expected <laughs> in a democratic city to have sirens. Yeah. You know okay, we are... Where are we? <laughs> Indiana Dunes National Park. We are Indiana Dunes National Park. We're actually, I do actually want to go into the dunes and see it. Mm -hmm. well, we're here at the visitor center and we're going to get the stamp for our book. What's the book? The book is right there. Oh, the book's over there. Anyway, we're going to get a stamp for the book. All right, these are four homes inside the National Park. I don't know anything more about them. They are private residences, so you cannot peer through the window. They're gorgeous. This is affordable. What is affordable back then? $4,500. square foot. the size of our one bedroom condo. So can we really see Chicago from here? <gasps> you can see Chicago from here. There's Chicago. Wow. Okay, we found a walkway beach or the water. There, yeah, Walters in Lake Michigan. This is where we were, where Walter dipped his toe or feet feet into Lake Michigan. I went two feet into Lake Michigan. Two feet. Mm -hmm. Two feet. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're gonna go. What are we doing now? We're Driving gonna around get, some more. We're gonna drive around some more and then go find a restaurant where we can eat indoors in. Since we're in Indiana. Here in Chesterton, Indiana, eating at a food truck that the Northside Restaurant? What is this? Northside Diner here in Chesterton. Here is their shop over here. The restaurant, but it's closed. So they're doing their their best right now with the outdoor dining, nice shade, and the, their own food truck. They quartered off a part of their parking lot. You know what? The businesses are doing what they need to in order to stay in business. We got some sort of waffle omelet. Oh, Tabasco. And Walter got a, an omelet with hash browns.
Here we are at Kankakee. Kankakee. I cannot pronounce this place. I only had time to reserve a 30 amp full hookup drive through. Um, the 30 amp is our my fault. Well, we weren't not really my fault. The reason why we have 30 amp is because we're not even supposed to be here. We are supposed to be in the Upper Peninsula tour with the Airstream Caravan, but that got canceled. So last minute shuffling and we can only get a 30 amp at this KOA. We did visit two national parks while we were here. As you can see, walking. we're walking to the trash can. As you can see, the park is pretty much empty now. It is one, two days after Labor Day. But it was full for Labor Day. It was full for Labor Day. Every single site had an RV. And we could probably get 50 amps for today. Yeah, but we're not moving. I don't want to have to pack up and move. All right, this is where you go to check in. They do, they do text you the day that you're arriving. So, um, let's see, the text essentially read that they do doing social distancing check-in. So they meet you out here in the curb, and then they drive you in the little golf cart. You follow the golf cart to your site. You're already paid up, which is nice, and you hook up. If you need anything from the store, you have to stand at the door and tell them what you need and they'll go get it for you. But you're not allowed to look in the store and you're not allowed to know what's actually in the store. So just use your imagination, uh, figure out what you think might be in the store and then tell them what you need. And they'll go get it. And they'll go get it for you. Okay, the, but such are the rules in Illinois. They do have a tank, propane tank filler. We ran out of propane. I filled up both tanks. And they were, we have two 30 gallon propane tanks, and they were $24. It was about $24 each to fill them up. We like the park, it is a bit far from everything, but right now everything is closed, so it doesn't really matter. We're eating in a lot. So would we stay in this park again? The answer would be yes, we would. A little postscript on the Kankakee Park from Walter. Uh, the first night we were here, in the middle of the night, I thought somebody had thrown a rock at Wanda. And it was very disturbing. I, we've only met nice people on this trip everywhere we've been. Texas, Alabama, uh, all these wonderful places. and. Only nice people, and then here we are in Kankakee, Illinois, and somebody throws a rock at our airstream. And, you know, I heard a second one. Wasn't sure what was gonna follow that. The next morning, I did mention it to Ariel, and he, or he mentions to me how loud the squirrels were the night before. Squirrels are up above in the tree, knocking down acorns that are landing on top of the RV and then burying them. And that's what the rock hitting the RV was. It was an acorn knocked down by a squirrel. And sometimes they knock down an entire branch, which is what sounded like the rock. So nobody was being mean. Nobody was doing anything inappropriate. On one of our rest days, we actually sat at the window and watched squirrels burying acorns. And it was actually kind of fun. So. It's interesting how a noise can sound like something that it isn't. And I'm uh, just sharing this little postscript. It was actually turned out to be something fun. Here's the oak tree with the acorns right there. That's the culprit tree. All is well. Bye. Thank you for watching. Bye.